In this video, we're going to focus on stack multiplication of a three-digit number, like 1, 2, 3, or 123, multiplied by one-digit numbers, like 4. And we'll look at a couple of these examples, and this is the third video in the stack multiplication series. We're going to assume you have a little bit of experience with the multiplication process, and we're going to use that experience to make sense of these three products. Okay, so how does this work? Well, in stack multiplication, what we're doing is taking the bottom digit and multiplying that by the different place values in the top number. So in each of these cases, we'll multiply these numbers and distribute it to the three digits on top, which represent three very different things. In the first number, of course, this three is three ones. So 3 times 4 is 12. But where do we put the 1 in 12? Well, 12 is just 1 10 and 2 ones. That's what 12 really is. So when we say 4 times 3 is 12, we put a 2 here for the 1's place value, and then put a 1 up here for 1 10. And now when we distribute 4 times 2, yes, we're really multiplying 4 by 20, but 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, and that's like 90. And now, 4 times 1 really represents 4 times 100, or 4 groups of 100, which is just 4. But, when we put that 4 down, it tells us 400. So this is 400, 90, and 2. And that's our answer. And the next problem, what do we have? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. And 20 is made from what? Well, two tens, ten and ten, and no ones. So we put a zero here because there's nothing in the ones place to put down yet. Five times five is twenty-five, but don't forget that five times four is twenty. So we want to put this two up here to represent the two tens that are in twenty. Five times five is twenty-five, and two more tens is twenty-seven. So we put a seven here, and a 2 up here. Why? Well, when we do 5 times 5, it's really 50 times 5. If we think of 5 50s, that gives us 250. And then we take 250 and added this 2 up here. That 2 was from the 20, so it's really 2 tens or 20. And that's 270. And look at the number 270. It has 2 one hundredths, 7 tens, and no zeros. So 5 times 5 gave us 270, and the hundreds place is here. So that's why we take this 2 from the 270 and put it in the next place value. So that gives us 5 times 1, it's 500, plus 2 more hundreds gives us 700. And you can think of that as 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 2 is 7. So notice we're able to solve a problem that leads us into the high hundreds with only thinking of our multiplication tables up to 9. And that leads us to this problem right here, which seems intimidating, but we can do it. Um, here, we've got 9 times 9, which is 81. We put an 8 up here, because 81 is made from 8 tens, right? 8 tens and 1 1. So, that gives us 1 and 8 or 1, 1, and 8 tens. We put this 8 in the tens column. We're just trying to line stuff up nice and neat. 9 times 9 is another 81. So we put a 1 here, plus the 8 is 89. So we put a 9 and an 8. And the reasoning there, again, 9 times 9 is 81. Plus the 8 there gives us 89. But if we think about the context of this, this 9 is in the tens place. So this is not 89, it's 890 really. It's 10 times larger than 9 times 9 plus 8, right? 890, that's made up of 8 one hundredths and 9 tens and 0 ones. So we put the 9 from the tens place in the tens column, that's right here, and we put the 8 from the 800 in the hundredths column right here. So now we have one last step, and that's 9 times 9 again, really 9 times 900, but 9 times 9 is 81, plus 8, 89. So what do we do now? 
Well, we put the 9 here, and we put another 8 in the thousands column, but we'll just put it right here. There's nothing to, to add it to or multiply by because there are 0 one thousands, really. If you think of 999, it's 0 one thousands, 9 one hundreds, 9 tens, and 9 nines. So in the last step, we could carry another 8 up here, but you would get 9 times 0, which is 0, plus 8, which is 8,000. And our answer is 8,991. And I think that's probably as intimidating as 3 by 1 multiplication could become in the stack method. Alright, hope that helps.